whole point. And so we talk about judgment, and we don't like to talk about that. But as Catholics, we believe in two judgments, really. There's a particular judgment. If I die tonight, and I go up for a judgment, it's heaven or hell. And if that journey toward heaven means a little purgation, then purgatory. At the end of time, time will collapse. And heaven and earth will be one. And we will be reunited with our glorified bodies, and then there is either eternal damnation or there is eternal glory. That's the universal judgment. And again, our Protestant brothers and sisters have a different take on this. Uh, they base it on Thessalonians, probably Paul's letter to Thessalonians, where it says that Jesus will meet them in the air. And, you know, the elect will be taken up before the great apocalypse occurs, before heaven and earth become one, everything evil is ended, and everything good lasts forever. There's a problem with that. It's called the rapture. So in case, if you're Catholic, and you believed in the rapture, stop it. Okay? Because it's not, it's not valid. The rapture was invented in the Middle Ages, and it comes from rapio rapire in Latin, which means to take so these will be taken, the others will be left behind. A great series of novels. Billions of dollars made on the Left Behind series. And so there's a problem with this because they will base this also on the Gospels where Jesus said, someone will be out tending the field. One will be taken. Another one will be left. One will be up on the rooftop. One will be taken. Another will be left. He says it's as it was in the days of Noah. When the days of Noah, the ones that were left were the good ones. That was Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. The ones that were taken up were the bad ones. So that's kind of the opposite of what they're trying to demonstrate by that scripture passage. But it goes on to say, Jesus will say to them, and by the way, he's talking to the apostles, he will say, the days were shortened for the sake of the elect. Well, if the elect are going to be raptured, they don't need the day short. Because they're not going to be there for them. And if anyone would be part of the elect, would it not have been the apostles? So there's things that don't jive up here. So we probably shouldn't place our bets on the rapture. But we should place our bets on the mercy of God. God who created us to be with him. And so often we allow things in this world to keep us. And I mean things, not just people, but things. We collect things. Uh, we accumulate. And it's security. And I understand we have to do some of that. But if you ever get worked up, or if you ever think about, I don't have time for God, just try this meditation. And I don't want to be morbid or anything, but it is a, a good meditation. <coughs> think about all the things, all the possessions, that you have. All the things that you have to clean and ensure and upgrade and maintain. All these things that we have. And then think of all the things that cause us stress. Driving some people, really, maybe to an early death. All the things that we have on our plate that we allow ourselves to stress over. All the deadlines. All the, the debts. And all these other things. Now take a moment and imagine yourself in your coffin. You are dead. How important are all those things? I mean, I imagine the first thing on our mind would be, where am I going now? Hopefully we have a clue. And the second thing would be, how is my family? How are they taking this? What are they going to do? But that's it. If we think about all the things that we fill our lives with and all the stresses that we have, ultimately, we should be concerned about our salvation. And the prescription for that is given today. Love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, not just your heart. It can't just, okay, I love God, and then do whatever. It can't just be with your mind, just an intellectual assent to God, but there's no relationship. Soul. It even can't be spiritual, just me and God. It has to go beyond the walls. Uh, Benedict XVI in Days of Caritas would say, 
To say we love God becomes a lie if we do not love our neighbor. He goes on to say, if our Eucharistic worship does not go beyond the walls of the church, then by its nature it is intrinsically fragmented, it's broken. And then finally, it can't just be with our strength. Okay, I'm always about service and I'm helping people, but that doesn't require me to have a relationship with God or a love of God or anything else. He wants it all. He wants it all. And if we love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, then we will love our neighbor and we will love ourselves. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen at our judgment. As we continue to journey toward the end of the church year, many of the readings are going to continue to point toward an end of all things. And one end is a new beginning. That the only doorway to eternal life is death. That the ancient saints called the day they die their dies natalis, their birthday. And so we continue to pray this month for our relatives and friends, those names that have been written on this cloth underneath the altar cloth, and those that remain in our hearts. And we ask for their prayers. That we may love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. We may love our neighbor as ourselves. And go to the Lord.